May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, pleasing to you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you. Oh my God, you're my rock and my redeemer, you're the reason that I sing, I desire to be a blessing in your eyes, every hour, every moment, Lord, I I desire to be a blessing in your eyes, in your eyes. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Ryan Fleener. I'm the rector here at St. Luke's. And it is a joy to be able to welcome you to worship on this Sunday evening, this third Sunday in Lent, a bright and beautiful day here in Darien. And it is good to be together in worship. It is good to be able to be together through the gift of this live stream. And it's good to welcome Susan back from her time away as our preacher this night. So as we prepare our hearts to worship God, let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we give you great thanks. Thanks for all the blessings of this life. Thanks for the gift of time set apart to be in your presence, to hear your word, to be fed at your table. So lift us this night into your presence where we would be still and know that you are God. Where we would be fed and sent out to proclaim your love. And we ask it all in Christ's name. Amen. As morning dawns and evening fades, you inspire songs of praise that rise from earth to touch your heart and glorify your name. Your name is a strong and mighty tower. Cause nothing has the power to say but your name Jesus in your name we pray come and fill our hearts 
A reading from the book of Exodus. Then God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord or your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth the sea, and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honour your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbour. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand and join us in singing better. Oh, you 
went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May only your word be spoken, Lord, and your word heard. In the name of the one who is the word. Amen. Please be seated. As I have perhaps shared with some of you, one of the unexpected blessings of this COVID season for me has been a dedicated yoga practice. I had dabbled with yoga before, but these months have secured my dedication and my commitment. Honestly, I think it's as good for my head as it is for my body, but in either case, I am hooked. And one of my instructors in this stable of yogis who routinely defy gravity with jaw-dropping ease, one of my instructors is this incredibly strong, very sparkly woman. And after she's led us through holding strong, long poses and chaturangas and vinyasas, we often end up on our, on our backs with both our feet our legs and our arms straight up in the air. And then she'll say, okay, now give me 30 seconds of your best hissy fit. 30 seconds. I want to tell you, it is remarkably cathartic. So I recommend that to you. But I was thinking that we are forever telling our kids and telling ourselves to use our words, right? Use your words. But sometimes we really need to use our bodies. And I think today is one of those sometimes for Jesus. Now I wanna take you on a little journey and it may feel a little bit like we're wandering, but I will remind you of the bumper sticker, not all who wander are lost. And if we do get a little lost along the way, we have a God who will bring us home. So our journey starts at the top of today's readings with our passage from Exodus 20. Exodus 20 is one of the layup identifications on any seminary test. Exodus 20, you'll tell me right off the bat, 10 commandments. Know that, got that. Thanks for the reminder, but not much to explore there. But I want you to think about it for a second. Do you remember how we got to those commandments and to that first commandment to have no other gods before God. You just heard it read. Jeremy just read it. Exodus chapter 20 verse 1 reads, Then God spoke all these words. Then God spoke all these words. All these words, like a note you might write and leave on your counter for your teenage son. Take out the garbage, clean your room, do your homework, good luck in the game. 
All those words. Now we know that when God speaks, things happen. God's words are powerful. God said, let there be light, and there was light. But the word was not the thing itself. The word light is not light. And commandments don't command unless we pay attention to them. Now, though, let's look at the opening of the Gospel of John. And we heard that the opening of the Gospel of John read two Saturdays ago at our first Saturdays at Five service in the parking lot, our choral even song. And at that service, young Juliet Sandoval read that passage, and she really did a masterful job of getting her tongue around all those twisty sentences. You'll remember that that famous passage, also a seminary layup, uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Eventually, we tongue twist our way to, and the Word became flesh and lived among us. Suddenly, the word itself has become action, has become body, has become person, has become Jesus. Word and flesh are now inextricably linked. The word has become the thing itself. Or to use the language of semiotics from the hot minute that I was a linguistics major, the signifier has become the signified. The sign has become that which it signals. And that leads me to today's story from chapter 2 of John's Gospel. Often when we tell or read or preach or teach this story, this cleansing of the temple as it's called, we often highlight the sort of rapacious behavior of those money changers. Kind of like ancient human equivalents of the foreign exchange machines we find in airports. They offer terrible exchange rates because they know you're desperate. Right? need the cash now. And the, those visitors to Jerusalem, to ancient Jerusalem, would have found themselves in that very predicament. They needed to tr change their Roman currency into uh, currency, the shekel the temp that could pay the temple tax. And so we say that Jesus' ire is directed towards these predatory business practices. And we're not wrong in reading the story that way and explaining the story that way because we remember that Jesus indeed said that his house was to be a house of prayer and not a den of robber, robbers. But those are not the words that he uses in today's passage. This story is told in all four Gospels. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it's put at the end of Jesus' ministry. And it acts as sort of a pivotal moment that pushes the authorities to arrest Jesus and consequently acts as sort of the final straw towards pushing towards Jesus' crucifixion. In John's Gospel, though, it occurs at the very, very beginning of Jesus' ministry. It occurs right after the miracle at the wedding of Cana. And its role here is not as final straw, but as embodied revelation. Jesus turns upside down not just those jars of money. Jesus turns upside down our entire understanding of the temple and of Jesus himself. And here Jesus' anger extends beyond language, beyond words. Here Jesus uses his body. He makes a whip of cords and he dramatically exits the sheep and the cattle from the temple. Here the word made flesh uses his flesh, uses his body to make a statement about his flesh, his body. Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up, he says, speaking not of the brick and mortar, but of himself. The building referenced in today's passage, the building referenced as under construction for 46 years, that temple will have been destroyed by the time of the writing of John's Gospel. And Jesus will have been raised. So by telling the story this way, and by placing the story in this, in this place, in his gospel, is John suggesting to us that the temple, that our holy spaces, that our, place, our, our sacred 
buildings are no longer necessary? I don't think so. I, I, I hope that's not what he's saying. I think rather he was just trying to enlarge our understanding, to push our boundaries, to make us think bigger. John's a poet, and that's what poets do. They break open our understandings to more cosmic sort of levels. And John was a sign seeker. I joked this morning that I think that there's a bit of Irish, being as someone who's from Irish descent myself, I think there's a bit of Irish in John, in that Israelite, that he seeks those signs. And the signs that John seeks are, the, are Jesus, right? The eternal word made flesh. Sign, signify, signifier, signified. Sign, and that which is signaled. All in one. Thinking about that, it occurs to me that COVID, COVID, that bodily virus that has sent us into such chaos over the last few months, year now, sadly. COVID has acts in some ways like John's telling of the cleansing of the temple. Because COVID has broken open for us new ways of seeing and being and doing church. We have learned that we can live stream worship services. We can Zoom meetings. We can find new and creative ways to create community without these buildings. And yet, in a conference that all the staff attended this week, uh, I heard in one of my little breakout groups a woman suggest that we'd lo we've learned that the buildings aren't necessary. And I thought, ooh. For me, that's a bridge too far. By no means, St. Paul might say. Because I know that I need these bricks and mortars. I need those stones that have seen so much life, that have seen weddings and funerals, that have seen Christmas pageants and Easter vigils and choral evensongs. I need the altar that sits in, this, in the chancel. I need the place where that Eucharist is celebrated. I need those pews or the chairs where people have knelt in prayer on their knees time and again. I need the grounds. I need the churchyard where beloveds now rest in God's eternal love. I need the church, the school. I need the, all those little kids who run around this campus wearing their masks like superheroes because they are superheroes. I need... I need that, those bricks and, that brick and mortar. So while I didn't intend to write a stewardship sermon, it felt to me like John's gospel was the good news that we need to at once take care of the Jesus who is the temple and the, G and the temple that is our place for meeting Jesus. Right, Because that is, this is where our kids come to learn the stories of our faith, and it's where we come to grow in wisdom and stature and in God's favor. So I'm emboldened to invite any and all of you out there who have the ability to help support this particular structure, this particular collection of brick and mortar this particular campus and all the work it's doing to support our church so that we can exit the COVID era, that we can leave behind COVID, not playing catch up, but ready to do all that new work that God has presented to us. The word of work and action, the, word of, the work of spreading the good news and using our feet to bring it to others. We can together turn the tables, turn the tables on injustice, on hatred, on racism. We can answer God's call to spread love, sow seeds of kindness, offer forgiveness. Yesterday in the parking lot, it was just the most joyful thing you could ever see. Yesterday in the parking lot, we built, kids built the ark and put a rainbow in a cloudy sky in 32-degree weather. And it made me think, gosh, 
I hope we, I hope we big kids can build a church, can build a church for them, can build a church for Christ, our temple, and all to God's glory and to the welfare of his people. Amen. Please stand and join us as we sing Holiness. for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops, Michael, Ian, and Laura, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for our outreach partner in Spirica in Stamford. I ask your prayers for the departed. We commend to God's care and keeping Beth Williams' mother, Diane Hobbs, and Lorna Young's mother, Kathy Baker, who died this past week. We pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for everyone on our parish intercession list. Today, we pray especially for Henry and Walter. We celebrate the birth of Ross Lucero's grandson, Bennett David Bevan, who was born this past week. 
Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Let us offer one another sign of Christ's peace. Exactly. Got to, got to finish out the phrase at least. Come on. <laughs> Peace be with you. You may be seated, those of you who are here. It is a privilege to be able to welcome you to worship this night. Just a few brief announcements. We are so glad that we can be together. And if you're new, perhaps joining us for the first time, we're especially glad that you've joined us. I hope you'll reach out and be in touch. We did actually have a newcomer orientation earlier today on Zoom. So uh, if you miss that, I'm sorry about that, but I would love to share with you some of that information so that we might welcome you with others at our new member welcome on April 11th, the Sunday after Easter. As Susan mentioned in her sermon, our Saturdays at 5 series does continue. We started with creation two Saturdays ago. Uh, last night we celebrated the story of Noah, and we will continue with the great stories from the Hebrew scriptures that make up the the first part of the Easter Vigil Liturgy that we will celebrate, of course, on that final Saturday in this holy season. Each week, our worship together is a little different, so I hope that you will check out all the information about those services on our website and perhaps join us in one of these upcoming weeks as we walk through this holy season together. Another opportunity for outdoor worship in this season is every Sunday at 9 a.m. We gather in the lower parking lot here at St. Luke's, for a brief 30-minute service bundled up with the opportunity to receive Holy Communion. If you haven't been able to be part of that, I hope that you will come join us for that. And then a final, work as, a final word as we look forward to Holy Week and Easter. That is, in some ways, just around the corner. And you will be receiving, if you're on the St. Luke's email list, and if you're not, you should be, you will be receiving an email on Tuesday morning at, no, at 10 a.m., Tuesday morning at 10 a.m., with the full uh, service schedule for Holy Week and the opportunity to register. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, even our outdoor services will be limited in their number of uh, worshipers that can be together at one time. So do check uh, for your email on Tuesday morning and plan to join us throughout Holy Week and, of course, as we celebrate the great good news of Christ's resurrection at Easter. So as we continue our worship at this altar, this night, in this holy season, receiving manna for our journey, let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Would you stand, please? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Uh, 
body of Christ. Blood of Christ. Let us pray. In union, dear God, with the faithful at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you myself, my soul and body, with the earnest wish that I may always be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I tie myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me. May I live now and forever in your love. Amen. Now please join us in singing Famous One. Having so received Christ's presence this night, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, You have graciously accepted us as living members of Your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and You have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of His body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage 
to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Look with compassion, O Lord, upon this your people, that rightly observing this holy season, they may learn to know you more fully and to serve you with a more perfect will through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.